Welcome back to another episode of The Blueprint. As always, I am your guest guest host. Uh, I'm here temporarily here and there. But Dre Green, I am uh, hosting this episode today of the Center of Business and Entrepreneurship as well. And I have my lovely guests over here next to me. I'm going to let them introduce themselves as well, share what they do and who they are. It's kind of my five W's, guys. <laughs> who you are, what you do, where you're from, and why you do it. So Ladies without first. further ado. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm Shauna Bjorkland, and I own The Gambler. I am originally from Tracy, but now I live in Marshall. Um, Why do it? Because it's fun, and and you make money while you're having fun. So that's good. Double double good. I forgot one more W, when. When did you start? Um, Well, I started bartending there right after I finished college was 2017, and then I purchased it in 2022. Okay. Nice, congrats! So, we have we have a owner, a business owner in here, yeah. two business owners. Definitely happy to have Shauna as a, the new owner of the Gambler. Yeah, yay! Yeah. <laughs> so. How about yourself, Mike? For me, yeah, uh, yeah. My name is Mike Sweetman. I'm the owner of Extra Innings Paninos and Pizzas, uh, located at the Varsity Pub in downtown Marshall, Minnesota. Um, we're celebrating our my 21st year of uh, business at Extra Innings. Right. The Varsity Pub has been there for 25 years um so what were the other w's uh who you are what you do where you do it when and why why'd you start into the business you said? um why i started i got into the hospitality business uh pretty young and uh it's just always been my passion to to serve people and uh to to make happy customers Happy guests. Indeed. I'm so glad you said that, Mike. Politically correct. Your laugh about this. I never knew it to be extra innings. I never said that. I do, we just say yeah. the pup. That's, That's just fine by me. I, <laughs> I always say I don't care what people call a panino yeah. as long as they enjoy it. For they sure. Can mispronounce it all they want. I don't care. For sure. So, man, our first question today is um, what is, what is business to you guys in the sense of being an entrepreneur from the day to day to the year to year kind of the year to date are you guys game planning for new ideas is it inventory staffing how do you go about all of that it's all of it uh (laughs) and uh i don't know that you ever really feel caught up oh everything (laughs) Um, no and staffing has been a huge issue now for everyone i think yeah specifically after covid but um and just connecting with your customers really is the main thing as long gotcha. as they're happy, we're happy. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's uh, the customers always come first to people who are truly in the hospitality industry. Yeah. Um, you know, if you worry about the pennies and dimes and dollars coming in, they're not. If that's the only reason you're in it, they're not going to get there, right? You mm-hmm. have to worry. The customer has to come first. They're, gotcha. they're pretty much family at this point, right? <laughs> For sure. After so many years. And oftentimes, <laughs> literally, I mean, yeah. you, you being from Tracy, me being from the area as well, a lot of times it is our family sitting in those seats. That is true. <laughs> Good or bad. Indeed. Indeed. So s- similar to me, you know, I'm an admission counselor right now. Didn't dream of being a mission counselor. So I want to assume and throw this question back to you guys and ladies. Uh, you know, has this always been an aspiration to be a business owner and either or work in hospitality, work in the bar scene or did you do something else going to college? And kind of how did it evolve to get you to where you're sitting at right now? Uh, well, I went to college here at SMSU. I have a, a minor in um, management, and I have a degree in marketing. So okay, go Mustangs. Yeah. So, like, yeah, it was just kind of fell into it, really. So I started bartending, and I just loved it. So Indeed. And yeah. I still bartend, so <laughs> come down and see me. <laughs> and I – very similar. Um, you know, I got into bartending um, right as I came down here to go to college and uh, at the Best Western over across the street. And uh, after working there for a while, working at a couple of resorts up north in Brainerd, and then coming back here and working at Applebee's, um, eventually I just kind of fell into it. I don't know if ownership was ever my ultimate goal at that time Mm -hmm. Um, but definitely being in the the service industry was where I wanted to be and uh, I just came across an opportunity that I got into and here we are in love with and here we are (laughs) yeah Yeah. 
Indeed. I, w- I got a two-part question. I just thought about another one because, first of all, food is important to a great bar scene that is very slept on. And then secondly, which would be probably my first question, can you elaborate a little bit on the skill set of a bartender? Because people think it's easy to be a great bartender. I myself is, am a, you know, a very whiskey bourbon connoisseur. So it's very difficult to get a good drink. I mean, well, I kind of think it depends on where you're going also. <laughs> like, we're a dive bar for sure. I don't do anything fancy. I'm sorry. So there's no smoke coming out of no, the... <laughs> no, I serve you drinks in a plastic cup. But... They're still good. Yeah, yeah. We still like you. <laughs> and and I think that's mostly what this community calls for. Yeah. I mean, there is yeah. a growing sector of people who want that craft cocktail. Yeah. I know when I started, it was probably five to seven years ago, I got on a Manhattan kick, right? Yeah. And going around from bar to bar, including the Varsity Pub, my own bar, and asking the bartender to make a Manhattan, they'd look at you like you're from yeah. another planet. Like, Somebody asked me that. I don't know how to make it. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. So. Um, well, I'll say, I'll, tell, I'll say to Shauna, you know, I've been, like I said, I've been going to Gambit for a while. And it, and nothing can go against, you know, a, a good pitcher of beer. You know, 50 cent night on a Thursday. I don't know if she still does that over Ooh, there. $2 now. $2 Inflation, now? Man. Oh, man, that is crazy. But, yeah. So, yeah. you know, I could, I could, you know, care less about the Manhattan. Give me a picture of Coors Light or something. Man. And I'm I will good. go into the price of tap beers when I was in wow. college. That People used to drive to, you know, Tyler and Taunton for penny taps. Man. That's so it's going up I a little am. bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Elaborate a little bit on that from the financial pieces. I know uh, we're uh, adamant in the center of business of kind of understanding, you know, things from a marketing and accounting side of things. Kind of, do you have a team that helps you guys with with that, or is it all on you? And then, how are you budgeting everything? My thing is inventory is expensive. Alcohol can be very expensive. How do you go about that? And is it on more so request of what your customers like, or are you kind of deciding to try new things and see how they pan out? I think it's a little bit of both. I mean, you definitely want to keep the stuff that the customers really like, but you also have to try to get new customers in, mm-hmm. trying new things. And this burger battle that's in town, that's a great okay. way to get new people in. Yeah. A lot of people I've seen personally that I haven't ever seen come in gambler, the Gambler before. So that's really been a nice thing. So shout out Small Town yeah. Events. Got you. Yeah, I think uh, John is right on there. It's uh, you got to try new things. Not everything works. Um I would say if accounting wise, I rely on, I have an accountant, mm-hmm. and, you know, we rely on them for that. I do most of my own budgeting, um, you know, liquor reps, sales reps, they're going to come to you with helpful. ideas all the time too. Um, so that helps yep. with the marketing. Social, social media is a huge thing mm-hmm. and it's very nice that it's free. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know about your feeds, but mine is all, you know, pizzas and sandwiches <laughs> and, you know, Mine's I cocktails. scroll through. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Got you. Got you. So um, being that we're in Marshall, you talked a little bit about community and that's mainly your customers. But, you know, we're obviously in a college setting. You being an alumni here, how big is it important to you guys personally to, you know, a lot of your customers are college students. And here we're trying to continue to um, build a great college town and have more things for the students to do. And a lot of times we end up being at the gambler or we come to get some food from the after leaving the gambler or before things like that. So what is the importance of your relationship with the college students, would you say, as an owner, understanding that this community in this town is built up a lot around the school in itself? The the college brings so much to the town, right? I mean, it's not even just bars, restaurants. Yeah. It's, you know, college kids buy new cars in town. They mm-hmm. They shop at the local shops. Their parents come down and, you know, buy houses for their kids to live in sometimes. It's... SMSU is integral to the community, and uh, their success is very important. Indeed. So. And you can definitely tell when they're not here. Yeah. <laughs> Spring break. <laughs> right. <laughs> Summer. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Spring break we got coming up here soon. Right. <laughs> and that's always a grind for us for yeah. staffing because right. all, all of our kids want to go on spring break at the same time, which I did too when I was there. So Got you. So question, you know, we got to talk about the good, got to talk about the bad. We recently had COVID, and I don't know if you were in ownership at that point. I was not. Okay. So maybe, Mike, this is more a question directed to you. Mm-hmm. Kind of how was that time for you as a business owner? You know, was it challenging? What kind of things did you have to uh, overcome? And then 
how has that made you kind of gave you that kind of morale, kind of that, um, you know, resiliency to build up a better business in the future? Yeah, it was, it was definitely challenging. It was, uh, there was a lot of fun parts of it, trying to figure out that, that new way of doing business. Um, you know, I think that's one of my favorite things about being in this industry is creating the next thing or trying to figure out what the next thing is going to be. Um, but it was hard. It was, I think going into COVID, we fared pretty well. We mm-hmm. transitioned into a, a takeout uh, curbside and delivery establishment for our food. Um, coming out of it was really hard. It was hard to get people back, the staff back into that mindset of really serving the customer and, uh, you know, really caring about their happiness. So, um, yeah, that was kind of the hardest part. I also had, during COVID, I had opened my second location in St. Peter, okay. Minnesota, uh, December of 2019. Mm. And so then three months into that, yeah, COVID hit. And, uh, you know, it was a lot of pivoting. Uh, I probably sometimes felt like we had pivoted right into the ground. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so it was it was fun. It was challenging. It was hard. It was all of it. it yeah. It was wild. Yeah. Well, Sean, I'm not going to let you get away from, <laughs> from this question. Even though you weren't in COVID, what would you say thus far as a young owner as well and a, and a female owner? And I will give you much credit to that. I love to see more women involved in business and then just kind of the world we're in, you know, making sure to be face, a facial relate relatability for young ladies to see that, hey, there's a female owner in this town that is doing it and I can do it. We have a lot of women in our center of business who are kind of admiring you from afar without knowing you. So kind of speak to the challenges of just that side of things as a woman and being a female owner in this town, but as well, what are some of the bigger challenges per se to you personally that you can think of that you kind of have overcome? I think people just underestimate me a lot, Mm. especially because I'm young and I am a woman, Mm -hmm. but you know, I just work all the time. So I'm just there. Yeah. I like to be there hanging out with my friends. Because you guys all become my friends when you come in all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, I mean, I just think I'm underestimated. And then you see me working, and I do work very hard. I will say that for myself. So I think once you see me in action, you really can understand that. For sure. And I would say, just to touch on that, I think from what I've seen of Shauna so far, it's you're in it for the right reason. You're not right. in it for a, a party. You're not in it to be the cool kid you're in it because you enjoy the business you care about your customers I definitely care about them so I mean that's a big thing too I've seen so many people through my years say I always wanted to own a bar and then six months later they're crying in the keg cooler yeah you know like what what did I do (laughs) because they just wanted it as a means to be more popular or to have their friends hang out there or whatnot and it's It's a lot more work than just that yeah yeah (laughs) yeah 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 Yeah. Yeah. Welcome back to another segment of The Blueprint brought to you by the Center of Business Entrepreneurship and everything like that. We have the Mr. George Taylor going on here today, and we are here for our emerging entrepreneurial mindset, uh, emerging entrepreneur segment. And we have Logan right here. Logan's going to explain kind of a little bit what he does, man. He's an emerging entrepreneur, and I want to hear the pitch. Logan, what you got for us, man? Yeah. So- oh, hold on, hold on. Before we get to that, let me set some context. Is that okay? Yeah, go ahead. All right. So this... Uh, Center of Innovation and Entrepreneurship Blueprint Initiative is going to highlight emerging entrepreneurs that are actually taking classes right now. But not only taking classes, they're in the process of putting their business in motion. So I think that's very important because the audience is not just going to see someone giving an end of semester project. Uh, Logan is actually taking steps as we speak to get this business in operation during this semester in fall 2024 and no later than the spring of 2025, we're going to see some good things happening. So I just want to make sure I set that contest because it's not, you know, the viewer may have a question. Well, anybody can get up here. Anybody cannot get up here. Yeah. You got to be grinding. You got to make sure you put this business in operation. And this young man right here, he's taking the steps. He's having the conversations. He is out there hustling for the business. He's doing everything the right way. 
Let me apologize, Logan. I ain't mean to shortchange <laughs> you like that for the Center of Innovation and Entrepreneurship. But, yes, he's doing some great things. And so we want Logan to kind of just share his piece, talk about his business, where you guys can contact him, reach him, and kind of what he's been doing right now in the grind to, you know, take his take his um, project and his business from a seed to a, you know, a Fortune 500. So go. Yeah. Floor is yours, Logan. So uh, my business is Tall Grass Tackle, and uh, what we do is we create kind of um, new types of lures and opportunities for all types of fishermen. Gotcha. And along on the packaging, on your lure that you buy from us, we gotcha. have a QR code on the back. And on this QR code, you can scan that. It'll send you to either our website or a YouTube video. And from there, it will give you step-by-step kind of how to use that lure, where to use it, um, what type of species to use it for. Um, I think that really helps out for people, especially who haven't really done it much. Um, Mm -hmm. And it can reach any level of angler. We can have the um, younger kids who are just like starting, let's say, fifth grader can go. And if they have access to a phone, they can scan that QR code, learn more about it. And that also works for people who have been doing it for however long, too. So... So what inspired, my bad, Mike, too close, but what inspired this? Uh, so what, I would, I remember a time where I was at Leech Lake in Walker, Minnesota. Uh-huh. And in, up there, I remember looking at all these lures and stuff at a tackle shop. And I didn't know what, like, half of them did. And I was like, you know, I really wish there was, like, an, a way for, besides just having YouTube, mm-hmm. because then that also it can take a while to kind of find what you want to find on YouTube if you're looking up, like, an idea or a way to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and this way, you just scan it directly, goes there, and you have it. So I just wanted to kind of limit that confusion with all kind of levels of anglers and just kind of create a community so they can learn more. Wow. Now, do you have a set team helping you? Because this sounds amazing you know very much of the detail and as a businessman you got to know everything oh, yeah. about it but do you have a set team that helps you with this yes i do right now um currently dr george taylor is okay. uh one of my helpers along with a couple of my uncles and my dad got you got you got you so say uh sort of how would people get in contact with you and where are you marketing things socially or are you marketing things just how are, you, how are you going about all of that yeah yeah um Right now, uh, we have an Instagram page so far. We're working on Facebook um, and Instagram. You can follow Tallgrass Tackle Co. Gotcha. And it should come up just right there. Gotcha. So uh, I got a just curious question personally for me because I'm a businessman as well, man. I love numbers. Obviously, we all enjoy having some good money in our pocket and our bank accounts, man. Kind of mathematically, can you give us a little bit, if share a little bit of kind of the blueprint of kind of ballpark figure from the exponential from now till about 10 years how do you expect and what do you expect to kind of take your business to okay yeah um so i'm hoping within this next year i'll be able to expand to at least uh two stores okay and kind of have a floor space in this area okay um and then hopefully in the future start kind of gaining um ambassadors through like professional anglers and stuff gotcha um, kind of repping the um the product and how to use it and with classes gotcha and as we kind of grow more i want to start implementing those anglers more into the videos as well so they know this isn't just something that we're making up this is something for real this is something that these anglers that they do every single day they they know what they're talking about now a little bit about things that we don't share a lot in certain episodes are different but to me, you have a select target audience. Have yeah. you spoke a lot to that and honing in on the target audience and kind of how do you market that? So um, I would have to say kind of looking more towards, um, I, I agree with you. I do have a very, it's kind of very wide kind yeah. of range. Um, right now where I feel like the most con- like misleading things could be with um, understanding it would be those younger ages. Okay. Like, even right now, I'm still learning things. Yeah. I find myself, like, looking things up. Mm-hmm. So I would probably be honing in more on those, um, that younger of the target market, gotcha. just so I can um, kind of be there for them and help them learn. Got you. And another thing would be, you know, understanding the differences between assets and liabilities. Now, in a business like this, have you aimed that, or kind of do you know what, what liabilities stand in your way for making your business successful? Um, as of right now, I'm not really sure. We're still mm-hmm. kind of like looking at things. Um, 
and yeah, we're just yeah, no, we're, we're no still, worries. And, yeah. that, and that wasn't to, to throw you under the bus and no, make yeah, no. make sure you be confused. Just just throwing something to pitch out there as a mm-hmm. question. But um, man, this is, sounds phenomenal. Uh, how can people get more involved in this? I myself didn't know that this type of business existed per se, yeah. even in this region right now. But um, um, me myself, I do have a lot of family that would be involved in this, um, relating to you know fishing and things like that. So, how much more can people get involved with this? Um, they can get involved by just kind of being aware about it, mm-hmm. um, looking for it around being, um present and being wanting to having that growth mindset with it just yeah. being able to being open to learning more to different people people's information gotcha. and just as we grow hopefully be able to reach everyone got gotcha. you now what grade are you at uh i'm a sophomore okay sophomore currently and then undergrad is in what uh elementary ed okay wow yeah. this is crazy yeah very different <laughs> very different i thought he was in business george what's going on here man, man you know he got a people that conversation outside <laughs> in the hallway i said come and let me talk to you for a little bit you can do the education thing and you can be an entrepreneur yeah you know some of the best entrepreneurs are educators as we know so now you helping my business out because I'm a mission counselor here, man. So you now I, I could talk to you, man. You should you might as well just double major. <laughs> so then you can teach this in your elementary ed. And oh yeah. And then still have the business going on. Sound good? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, man. Well, we well, can we say a couple yeah. things, um, Dre? When do you think your website is going to be out? That's what I was going to ask. Um, That's a great question. And also, do you have an email contact where somebody has questions that can? Uh, reach out to you via email or phone, your choice. Yeah, so um, the website I'm hoping should be out probably by, by either beginning or mid-May. Okay. Um, having everything set up, get all the bugs fixed. And um, anyone who'd like to contact me could uh, contact me at my school email, which is uh, logan.erdman at okay. smsu.edu. Or they could reach me by phone at 507-360-3434. Got you. Got you. Mike was being a little respectful. I'll take the gloves off because I'm, you know, for me, it doesn't really matter. I work here. I'm not throwing any shade, but I will give you your flowers. It, uh, to me, from what I've heard and me being there earlier in the spring, I haven't been much because I do a lot of fall travel and stuff, but you, you've done a great job. You've done phenomenal as far as I think from a fact or two from safety that we haven't even talked about. And we all know what that is. You know, working in a bar can be rowdy. We can, you know, you have. Uh, you know, have all these personalities, all these emotions, people coming in on a Friday night after work, being along, a girlfriend, boyfriend issues, things like that. You know, you have done a phenomenal job from what I've seen and what I've heard. So I want to say that. And, of course, for you as well, Mike. I just know as far as from the college side of things, students going there on a regular and things like that, it's it hasn't been a hiccup, you know. And you kind of structured it different than a lot of people, but which is good. And so you adding your own unique twang sort of say to things is very good in enlightenment and that's kind of to me those intangible things that make a good business and that's the thing I want to ask you guys next what are you, your kind of core values when you got into the business and then kind of what core values did you have then Mike when you first started 21 years ago till now are they similar are they the same and kind of what makes up you know kind of your identity as a business owner I would say when I started I had no idea what core values were <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. I was just doing it um, as we've grown it's definitely been community. Gotcha. That's the biggest thing. Um, gotcha. Yeah. Indeed. Marshall's great for community. Everybody loves this place. Yeah. But, I mean, for me, it's definitely customers, and I like to be there on the floor interacting with people, working so that, you know, I, I am there. So mm-hmm. they know that, like, if there's an issue, everyone can come to me, and it's not just I'm the guy in the back pushing paper, but I'm there yeah. in it. Every day. Got you. So to speak a little bit on safety, um, you know, we have a lot of things going on in this world and that are off topic politically as far as gun laws and things like that. Are you are you fully staffed when it comes to security? And is that another kind of uh, entity or additional kind of um, resource that you guys look for to kind of budgeting into your business per se? I would say us personally, um, through the years, you know, we used to have bouncers mm-hmm. regularly. Um, through the years, we've transitioned away from that. We just become the environment for us is right. People come to us and they eat, mm-hmm. have a couple of drinks, and then yeah. they go down the street. 
And uh, so we haven't had the need for it as much. Mm-hmm. At the same rate, um, one of the reasons that we had problems through the years was people getting upset with us because we did take security seriously. Mm. Right? We would throw you out if you were being an idiot without hesitation. Um, and other places maybe wouldn't at the time. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm, I mean, obviously, change of tides and... I mean, security is very serious. important to <laughs> it, it is i mean people want a, a comfortable and safe place to go yes indeed and so you can't allow the that kind of behavior yeah and having someone who actually knows how to like keep a level head yeah when that person becomes aggressive yeah is definitely important yeah. which our security is awesome doing that so indeed i mean I'm just somebody that keeps it frank, very transparent. I'm a young African American man from the cities. I've seen a lot in from the downtown area there and the uptown area there to even here. And you know, for me, it's always like I've always been a college student too, and I play football. So you kind of can, you know, assume who people are. But then you have other people who are just in town that live here, and then you, you know, that can cause problems and things like that. So it is very important because to a lot of people, they'd be like, "Oh, you need security in Mar." Yes, you do, and I and I very much so appreciate the security and the things that you know you kind of get swept under the rug so i definitely wanted to share a little bit of enlightenment to that but uh i will say this this is kind of more a question to both you guys uh ladies uh man and lady and um i will say um uh competition wise is there any competitive nature as far as you uh pub fuzzies any of the other bars or is it just a family affair type of deal I mean, I think it's kind of both. You know, there's always competition and everything. But yeah. it's also nice that we all can work together, especially with the St. Patrick's Day parade coming up. Got you. So we're all, I think, co-hosting that. Okay. I agree. It's a little bit of everything. I mean, through the years, um, obviously the previous owner, the gambler, and we were kind of like Cheers and Gary uh, okay. Tavern, but I don't know if anybody is going to know that reference. But, you know, um, my business partner Matt and and the previous owner Tom, they're kind of like brothers. I feel like they're they're <laughs> they're so is. much the same, but they would mm. they would like to kind of get after each other a little bit and, yeah. and make it a competition. But yeah, ultimately, what's good for the I'm not really here to ruffle feathers. I'm just here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Sounded I mean, like I'm playing it safe. Like I said, the more people we can get downtown, the better. Well, for yeah, all yeah, for yeah, everyone. Right? So yeah, uh, that's what we have have to look at these days and and to elaborate on that do you guys so to speak to ideas when you have ideas like the parade like the burger um competition you know i've always thought this would be a perfect perfect place and you guys may have had it was but uh, a pub crawl like what they have usually in the cities where you go to bar to bar get a discount on certain beers and things like that do you guys collaborate on those ideas there have been people in the past that have done it i think it's been done through the city before and okay. then uh ryan anthony with downtown sound entertainment has done it I think it's just a lot of work that it definitely needs. You have to be there and doing it, mm-hmm. and it's just a lot of work. So some people don't really want to do it. Got you. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah, that's I mean, exactly what I was saying to Mavi about the the burger battle uh, and the parade. It's mm-hmm. these are ideas. Yeah, we've had them, but the execution is so hard when you have so much right. else on your plate. Because if you don't have volunteers or someone <laughs> in it doing it, it's very difficult to execute. Got you. Got you. So I know you spoke a little bit about when the students are here, it's kind of boring. I was going to say, what would you say is the best season for you all as far as business? I would say fall. Okay. Or, you know, we we obviously with our patio, summertime, yeah. uh, that helps I us quite a bit. Luxury. I'm sorry. <laughs> we didn't I always wish. have that either. You know, when, we, when I first started there, that whole block was buildings. We just had one little alleyway there for parking, so it's been the, an evolution over the – the years mm-hmm. uh, to what it is today. So, uh, yeah, but summertime we we kick up with you know softball, volleyball, uh, sponsorships and stuff that brings those teams in. Got you. Are you all vendors at the state the fair in town? Town fair? No. Okay. I was just curious. I was like, I don't know if I ever seen you sell the paninos at the fair. I I haven't, and you know a lot of people have always asked about that, but I just don't. I don't believe the quality is there yeah, when yeah. I have that remote product. So I just don't got gotcha. you. I don't want to give somebody a subpar product. Yes, indeed. That's a good businessman right there. <laughs> I would ask next, um, you know, another thing to the college is how can students get involved 
is there internship programs you all have? I know you are a bar business, but um, are you We're always of, hiring? Always hiring. Come and get an application. Us Bobby, too. <laughs> you hear her? <laughs> <laughs> you can apply online. Yeah. Shoot us a Facebook message. All the yeah, kids don't use stop Facebook in. anymore. I don't got know. Got you. Anymore. I mean, I got hired from singing karaoke, so wow. anybody Bobby, can get hired at on. any point. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I would. I got to ask because we're almost close to time, but what would you say, um, Mike, is the best thing on the meal? And then same to you, Shauna. I mean, best thing on the menu. Well, our buffalo chicken panino is hands down the number one best seller. Yeah. Oof. It outsells everything else three to one. Man. Yep. It's crazy. So. Well, my personal preference is the patty melt. Ooh. I've heard it's delicious from everyone. I personally love it, but also pizza and wings. I mean, also a lot of college kids don't know that we have food. So I, come in to eat the food, please. Yes, <laughs> I, I didn't. I knew for a while. But I think it's because you guys don't come until like 11 p.m. Yeah. And the kitchen's closed by then. Okay. I think you may have upgraded some of that stuff, too, from what it used to be. I try. Yeah, so <laughs> that helps. Yeah. <laughs> I, Quality I'm, matters. Speaking to another question, and I don't want to feel like I'm throwing darts at Shauna, but or even you all as well, the timing to everything, closing down at 1 in the morning, is there something that will change? Currently, a lot of students, I've been requested – you know, come from central, t- different areas where it closes at 2 p- two a.m. in the morning, things like that. I have had that question a lot, but we legally can't okay. stay open. Okay. It's a Marshall City ordinance. Okay, got So you. I guess if you want to change it, go to the city. <laughs> <laughs> got you. Got but you. And then I show wasn't up. mad that it was 11 p.m. during COVID. Like, yeah. Because the bar was the pre-party then, you yeah. know? Yeah, indeed. Yeah. And then you have a DJ as well, do yeah. you? Yeah. Okay. Thursday through Saturday. Okay. Nine to one. Is there any specific type of like day? Is it Thursday for certain genres of music? No, Friday? it's kind of just a mix all it's night. Everything. Okay, got you. Anything at your establishment as far as music? We're not doing much for live music or DJ right now. Okay, got you. But stop in for a bite to eat and a cocktail before you head out and dance the night away. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Now, best drink now on the menu, would you say? Oh, gosh. So I would say for us, we're known for the Short Island. Okay. Um, that's a drink that one of our bartenders, geez, uh, 20 years ago, made up, yeah. uh, created, and it's kind of evolved through the town. I was going to say, um, you can't find it anywhere else. Cause right. People go up to the cities and ask for it. They're like, what is that? Right. <laughs> but now every bar in Marshall right. makes it. And uh, you know, so that's kind of, that's what I would say is our trademark drink. Okay. Otherwise, we have 24... Beers on tap as Man. well. So, any IP, uh, what are what do they call IPAs? IPAs. Yeah, boy, I don't know our total, our current lineup, but I guarantee you, there's an IPA or two on okay. there. Yeah, got gotcha. you. Uh, I only have eight things on tap, so I can't compare that. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I do have Deschutes IPA on tap though. Got gotcha. you. And then you all are the lemon drops, right? You know, people don't really order lemon drops anymore. The now what? it's like pink starbursts, wow. Vegas bums. Okay. Um, a lot of adioses. I don't know what that is. What is that? It's a lot of liquor. Okay. It just you gets you really Adio- Adios. Yeah. Oh. Adios, MF or our, yeah. our crew swear, over here guys. is laughing, so they must know what adios <laughs> is. That's crazy. Well, I would thank you all for being here. My last question always is this. Um, we always ask, you know, if you could tell your younger self about where you're at now, what would you say to that? individual i would say oh, plan ahead you know you you got to think of uh your exit strategy you got to think of your working relationships uh when i got into it i partnered up with uh matt and we were just two guys going well we got something we got to do something so we just started doing it and you know like i don't have a lease i don't just little stuff like that that um, more thorough planning is important when you're getting into business. Gotcha. You want to be thorough. Um, it doesn't always work out, and, you know, you want to make sure you have your, your bases covered. So Indeed. I would just give myself a high five. <laughs> I came a long way. <laughs> Indeed. Never expected it, so. And that's, that, that's how we always want just an opportunity, right? Yeah. Indeed. Anything you guys – have coming up uh far as this summer far as plans any events i know you just talked about the parade once again uh st patrick's weekend coming up but anything in the summertime we should look forward to 
So, yeah, we're, the Varsity Pub is celebrating its 25th year in business. Okay. So, actually, April 20th will be our 25-year anniversary. Man. Mike, you got to give a clap to that, man. Thank you. 25. And uh, so we'll be doing things throughout the year. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I have specifics to It'll be some free say, paninos or? There's probably going to be some giveaways okay. in there, some gift cards, some, yeah. Indeed. Keep an eye on our social medias for announcements. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, we have a comedy show coming up on April 6th. Okay. So there'll be more about that on social media also. So we have Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook. So is this local amateurs coming in? I think they're from North Dakota. Okay. They were here last year too, but it's a couple different guys. So. Alrighty. Sounds good. Well, I appreciate you all coming on the show, coming to take some time out of your busy schedules. Thank you for everything. Um, it's been an honor getting to know you all a little bit more about your fine establishments, which we can't see yours, Shauna, but we can see you, yeah, Mike, you know. I always like to tell people, you know, so yeah, look for the lookout. It. But yeah. appreciate y'all. All right, so, Dre, we cannot, we'd be remiss if we didn't take a moment to thank you. So I'm going to take a few seconds to tell the audience that this concept of the blueprint was in discussions early last semester, maybe a few months before that. And it was in my mind to always do this, and it was very important. And I shared it with Mavi, and the first name she brought up was DeAndre. We call him Dre Green. And... When I met you, you came into that conference room. I was saying to myself, who is this guy? And what can he tell us about starting a podcast? Because we for real. And I know the moment you said, well, you looked at me and you said, are you for real? I said, am I for real? Who are you to ask me? Am I for real, man? <laughs> and I knew then that it was going to be a fruitful partnership with someone that has grit, determination, knows about relationship building, knows how to look at barriers, knows how to facilitate conversations, and the blueprint by the Center of Innovation and Entrepreneurship does not happen without you. Man. And so I just want to take some time to acknowledge your efforts, your leadership, your collaboration, your communication, and your teamwork on behalf of the Center for everything that you did and that you are still doing for the next week. We started off fighting for an episode. Thanks to you, thanks to Mavi, thanks to Elena, we're making inroads through our community and through our region. The intent of this podcast was to give voice to students and leaders in the business community. Not only did we meet that, we're exceeding our expectations. And so, Dre, you're going to be well missed. I'm going to think about you a lot. I want to make sure that we keep our conversations going. I congratulate you on all your current and future business success. And Godspeed. Appreciate that, man. To the audience, they didn't know. He was he was uh, taking a, accepting a new job at the University of Louisiana State, better known as LSU, uh, as a regional director for a mission. And, and this is just kind of speaks to our conversations and just being a businessman in a sense, knowing when to, knowing when to fold them, when, knowing when to hold them, you know, to, per se, you know, you, it was a great opportunity that presented itself, not only from the financial piece, but just like you said, George, I appreciate all those words, man, about looking at longevity of things and even a business like you're doing. That's why I asked you from year one to year 10, because yeah. that's how the vision has always been for me and whatever I've done to be able to see it down the road. Now, short term goals are very important because I'll even give you kind of some business values as of winning the day is my motto. Like every day I win, try to win the day, attack the day. You know, I write a calendar, I write goals, I write objectives out for the year, for the month, for the week. But at the bottom, at bottom of the line, it got, I got to win the day. If I don't win the day, I don't win those other things. But two, I'm always looking. I'm always, George has taught me that, you know, being around the ladies here, being around everybody else in the center, they have taught me that my colleagues in my office have taught me that it's you know you got to always see what's down the road he is big on that because that's how you you know that's what makes the dream great is looking at the seed and not looking at it as a seed but looking at it as a 
uh, you know, one of those grand trees or yeah. something like that, you know. And so I say to you, to much success to your business, and I say to you, George, and everybody from the cinema, I mean it from bottom of my heart. I appreciate everything, man. Uh, I just wanted to play a role, and I, I truly meant that. I didn't want to come in and be something more than I was, and I just wanted to be accepted from the crew in the center, and everybody was welcoming them with open arms. Nick staying up late hours doing editing. I'm a, a believing in things like that and having a camera crew and everything like that, but this – this project, like I said, is going. It's bigger than me. Yeah. It's bigger than everybody in here, and so it's going to do phenomenal. Even when, you know, I leave here and go on with what I'm doing, but man, I just appreciate everything I do. Absolutely, and a quick shout out to communications faculty and staff, and to Nick, our leader, yes, up here indeed. in the studio. Everyone doing a great job. Indeed, man.